Hi, hello everybody. Yeah, uh, you know I'm Matthias, and uh, my last name I I I write it here because it's uh, not so easy to pronounce. So it's uh, Bachhofen is my last name, but yeah, I know it's it's, it's hard to say for uh, no Swiss people. So I have a second last name, and I'm sure. This one is much easier for you. Beer. And that's really my last name, my second last name. It's not, it's not a joke. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the easier one. Uh, yeah, I live in Switzerland. I'm in the Italian part of Switzerland. I come uh, from the German part, from close to Zurich but it's now um, 30 years that I live in the Italian part where I have my um, good turning school. And um, before starting, I thought to go just for a moment in my, in my, um, in my show, showroom, sorry. Oh yeah, um, you know, uh, I speak German and Italian. My English is not so good, so please speak slow with me. And um, yeah, I, I'm sure we will, um, it will work, yeah. <laughs> so let's go just for a moment in my showroom. And uh, going there, you can see, we, we have to go outside, so you can see also some of my wood stock. Some nice, some nice walnut luck here, and uh, this is you on the on the shelf. This is uh, much more you, uh, a lot of you, some sequoia, and there is much more. It's a little bit a mess, but uh, I don't show you. Oh, that's interesting too. You and uh, London Plain or Sycamore London Plain, don't know exactly. And, yeah, this, this is my showroom, and um, you can see here the stuff I usually do a uh, lot of colored stuff, and uh, this is from the last series I do. Uh, because in the last three uh, months I didn't have any any um, students, so uh, not too much to do. Uh, so I, I was working on this um, series of uh, new um, um, sculptures. Uh, these, these are all, all off center pieces. Everything turned um, front side and back side with some um, some uh, metallic paint on. I don't know. I think you don't see that very well, but it's uh, metallic paint on the black. So yeah. This one is. Um, Burnt, but uh, uh, all these, all these, all these basins are, are are turned. So I'll show you my face plates. Uh, I do. I, I have to do this stuff here. Also, this one is um, burnt. The inside turned and burnt. The inside everything you. And uh, this are my colored pieces, and here um, you can you can immediately see who is 
who was inspiring me in the last few years. It was Phil Irons, uh, and I have been in his shop for four days, uh, I think two, two and a half years ago. Um, I love this technique very much. I, I, I did that before knowing Phil. I have some pieces already. This is one of the of the of the pieces I did before knowing uh, Phil. And um, I'm very happy uh, that Phil showed me some some. Um, some tricks to uh, color better. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a huge different uh, difference, I think. Another thing I love to do is hollowing. This is uh, another colored and hollowed piece. Um, it's the same same tree. It's a maple. A very very figured maple. Uh, another one from the same from the same tree is this. Then, yeah, you can see that I love doing um, big uh, stuff. Mm, I don't love very much doing the, the small stuff. Um, this is a uh, Albizia, Albizia Julibrisin. It's not a local wood, but it uh, grew here. So it grew 30 meters from my house. So um, I'm happy to use um, local local wood. Now you um, you may wonder uh, where I learned wood turning and why perhaps uh, I'm turning since eighty four, so it's uh, thirty six years now. Um, uh, I after after school I made a, an apprenticeship as as uh, Clark, perhaps? No, I don't know exactly. In, in, in the office. And after these uh, three years, um, I recognized that um, that won't be my <laughs> life forever. And I decided to, to do another apprenticeship, wood turning. Apprenticeship in Switzerland, that means um, you work for a hosting company. Usually, it's uh, one or two, uh, one or two days school, and the other three days of the weeks of the week you work in the hosting company. Hosting company means they have to teach you. It's not. It's not just. You work for them, but they have to, to teach you. We did a lot of um, um, kitchenware stuff, like nutcrackers, um, well, bowls, of course, um, uh, pepper mills, hundreds and hundreds. And uh, the apprenticeship uh, lasts usually four years. Uh, when I I had already um, uh, made an, another apprenticeship, so uh, I had to go to school less than the others, and I made it in uh, less time. So after two and a half years, uh, I I went to the exam. So that's that's how I learned and why I learned wood turning, and now. In between, I made a lot of other stuff, uh, like all, always with, with wood, 
like um, joinery, uh, carpentry, and saw milling, and and also um, uh, uh, prefab houses. Uh, that's when I had kids, and I had to bring home a lot of money. <laughs> And uh, it's now eight, nine, eight years I went really back to my roots and I, I'm just wood turning with my students and for myself. So that's, that's what I do now. Um, yeah, if somebody has some question about the stuff here, so, uh, otherwise we would go back in the shop. I love really much this one. This is one of my preferred pieces. And um, I made this, uh, I think, four years ago. Not able to sell it. Uh, don't know why, but uh, I love it very much. Something else you would love to see here. So let's go back in the shop. Uh, here you can see some olive, olive wood, also this nice uh, piece here that's olive wood uh, as we are uh, very close to the, to the Italian border. Um, my friends often bring me some olive pieces we don't have here, uh, or not uh, at this level, some small tree. But um, from Italy, I got after some nice piece of olive wood. It's a really nice, nice one. So let's start here. This is my really first laugh. <laughs> it's, it's the lathe I used during the apprenticeship. After the apprenticeship, I had the possibility to, to uh, bring it home because my hosting company uh, had to be closed. It, it wasn't my fault. So. Um, yeah, I really still love this lathe. Uh, it's a Swiss made lathe, um, no electronics, heavy duty. And um, this is another piece of you uh, I will uh, turn next week. Um, always for this series. Then uh, I have a, a second one of the same, of the same, um, no, it's a third one. One is here under this. I don't have enough space for all my names. Uh, this is the third one, the second one is there. This is the youngest one of these three, the, the one I, I used uh, during my apprenticeship is from the, from 60, 1960. This one is uh, from 98, I think, or something like that. Uh, but it's the same. So uh, they are aligned. That gives me the possibility to turn, I think, to uh, three meters in uh, 20 or 40 or something. It's, I use it once, I think, for a, for a uh, ship, uh, uh, a sailboat. I use the, the whole, like, sometimes I use it something here or, uh, but usually I use this one for this one. 
it gives me the possibility. So these are my really old ladies and uh, I, I really can't separate from this one. I love them. I love them very much. And I, I still use them not daily, but very often. And then uh, we can have an overview, I think, of, of my, of my schoolroom. These are all uh, from the Stratos family, the, the biggest one, Stratos itself. Nice made, and then uh, the FU, uh, the MIDI 175. This is the MIDI 2, MIDI Pro. Uh, nice, nice ladies, and they're very good for the school, for, for teaching. Every every um, every lathe has um, has his, his tool set. These are the crown tools, the crown creo tools. Every every lathe has his own set. Um, the, um, then here, this is the place of my uh, FU 230, but I sold it already and I will get a new one next week, I hope. No, no, this week. I hope uh, on Friday it will, it will arrive. This is the Twister, is uh, 200. Um, all nice, nice lathes. What else? Um, let's. Oh, this is another one hundred and uh, one hundred and seventy-five midi blade. Then um, let's go to have a look on my XL. This is the, the, the joinery part. I have two, two guys working here. Um, it's, a, it's a shop sharing. The, the whole shop is mine, but uh, I am has to share them, share the out, outcomes. Uh, uh, yeah. Two, two guys doing joinery. This is my XL, I think. So, um, yeah, what to say? This is um, these are my 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 face plates for all this uh, off center stuff you saw before. So now the the center is here. The idea the idea is I don't know if you can see that very well. But the idea is, to, if, if you have here the center of this of this wheel, uh, to do this this um, basins here and and here, and of course also on the other side. So what I have to do is, I, I have to I have to to move on the axis, and then I have to turn around the old center of the piece it's it's a little bit tricky um uh, what, uh, what i have here is a, a, a slab it's a face plate with a slab so uh with these screws here i can move the piece on the on the axis and then um, lowering these uh, screws here it um it turns on the on the old center, and then I can I can turn this. Uh, oh shoot! Let's have a look. I think I can go about 
on uh, 350 RPMs, well, 377. Uh, It's not so scary. Eh? It seems it seems scary, but it's not so it's not so bad. If I stay here. I work from here, so it's not really it's not really a risk. You shouldn't never stop the leg with the red button when you do that because the the the, oh, uh, the, the, the way he took the piece will, will uh, go ahead to move this and it will um, it will fly fly of the of the way. So go down with the RPMs and stop the piece like this. You can fix the the security screws and whatever, but this piece would would uh, would fly away uh, for sure if i if i would stop with the red button so this is one of these face plates this is another one um, without uh, off center this is the one i used for the for a piece you saw before, and the off center was uh, I, uh, was made by um, moving this this uh, this piece here out of center. Another one for ah, oh, this is the one for the piece for this bottle bottle piece you saw before uh, with the two burnt. Uh, parts. This um, this rubber here is just uh, for not damaging the the already turned uh, form of this of this bottle. Uh, this is the biggest one for a piece I don't have here. It is in Italy in a in a exhibition. Oh, it would be in a it should have been an exhibition because I, uh, um, they never opened. I sent the piece in Italy, in the south, for a good exhibition, a nice place in, uh, in, uh, in Gargano, in uh, Vieste, it's a place, a really nice place, and a very, very good exhibition for, um, um, uh, wood sculptures, also paintings, and uh, this is a sled uh, tool. You can move the piece on the axis and do turnings. Oh, also the the small one uh, with the several basins I made on this one. Yeah, that's uh, when I want to have fun. I use this 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 um, this face plates, the face plates. Okay, then you can see I have here a nice pencil. Mm -hmm. 40, 40 centimeters of opening or something like that. Outside, I have a little um, uh, sawmill or oh, chainsaw mill, uh, logo saw, so I can prepare my own wood. I, I pick the wood up uh, in, in, in this area. Uh, I know all the, all the tree uh, trimmers and um, uh, so they call me if they had found something interesting or that they think it could be interesting for me. And then I mail it uh, how I need it. And um, yeah, uh, 
and also um, playing. That's not really stuff I need. I need a lot, but it's um, it's already from the time we we did a lot of joinery, so I have it. Ooh. What else to tell you? Some question? Yeah. That makes it much easier if you have some question. Yeah, there's a question about uh, your colored pieces. What finish do you put on them? The color pieces? Oh, um, I use the... Um, I, I use... I love to use the, the Hampshire sheen uh, intrinsic colors and also the, um, the spirit stains, chestnut spirit stains. Uh, I, I love both. Uh, they give um, uh, different possibilities. Uh, intrinsic is um, penetrating a little bit less, so you can, you can work better by hand on spots uh, to in, in, enhance some special spot and uh, while the, the penetration of the of the chestnut uh, colors gives a more regular um, pieces then um, I love this pop pop up colors uh, of the of chestnut but i also love uh, the the more natural uh, colors of of the uh, hamshashin colors after that usually i use a sanding sealer and then uh, wax the my preferred there is uh, really the the um, I have it here. My waxes, the the um, Hampshire Tree High Gloss. I love that really much. And these are all these uh, other colored waxes or uh, Hampshire Tree waxes. This is the latest piece I made. This I, I made this. Um, um, Sunday, and I don't know if you can see that really very well. Uh, this is the uh, chestnut metallic paint on the bare wood, not the the uh, the other one you uh, I showed you was on 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 um, black sprayed wood. Uh, this is on bare wood, two th two um, coats of black metallic and two coats of copper metallic uh, paint. Uh, it's, it's a funny piece. <laughs> it's not really what I do usually, so I'm quite happy with this. And uh, my idea is to do a, a, a three pieces. Uh, they should stay together. And uh, with uh, different colorings, I think the next one will be same color but colored here and banger here. So that's um, uh, what I'm working on just now. Yeah, that's for the finishing. Oh, all of. Uh, I also use a lot of Danish oil. I love the Danish oil for all my my more natural pieces for for the for for a lot of pieces, little bowls or all this stuff. I use I use uh, Danish oil. Do you put lacquer on the colored pieces when they have done with the colors? This all these uh, very glossy pieces are without lacquer. It's just sanding sealer, a lot of sanding sealer, and uh, high gloss wax. Okay. 
there is some piece, uh, perhaps a, a small blue there, and uh, one is uh, like pink or something. These are uh, lacquered, but the, this bigger green and bluish ones, it's all with um, with uh, sanding sealer and and uh, high gloss wax. Okay, um, your off center face plates and the pieces you were showing mm -hmm. earlier, do, do you use counterweights on those to balance them? Oh, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> oh. Sorry. You can see that here, um, this is balanced with um, um, Akacha pieces, Robinia. Acacia pseudo Rubinia. We have a lot of this Acacia. I, I, um, I don't love Acacia very much or Robinia very much to turn because that means a lot, a lot of, um, of sharpening. Uh, Rubinia is uh, very sandy, so I, I don't love it very much, but it's good for, for, um, um contour contour weight or yeah so uh what you have seen before with uh 377 rpms they didn't move um the, the light isn't didn't didn't uh, wobble or or whatever so that's that's what i use okay thanks how do you fasten the sliding part of that? Um, the the uh, your face plate there. You've got the part that slides slides along. Does it just screw that on? Ah, uh, the, uh, the 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 sled. You you mean this this part here? Yes. That. This is it's just fixed with um, eight screws in every in every angle um, uh, two screws. And uh, yeah, unscrew it and you move it, and then you you can screw it again. And this one, it's it's just a, a conic turned piece, and uh, that fix it with uh, these five screws here. Okay, thanks. Um, Another question for you. How popular is wood turning in Switzerland? We don't have really a big wood turning um, um, uh, scene. I'm more, I'm more oriented, oriented to Italy. I, I do a lot of, of a lot. <laughs> I do uh, demos in Italy and um, sometimes also in the, in the German part of Switzerland, but I'm more, I'm more uh, active in Italy. Italy has a big uh, wood turning activity, but they don't really have um, a wood turner story. So uh, there is not a lot of people teaching in, in Italy. Um, so they are, I have a lot of, of students coming from Italy and um, in Switzerland I know some Turner but not really, really much. But that, that could also be uh, because really uh, the Italian part is on the other side of the Alps, uh, it's a little bit separated from the rest of of Switzerland, so um, uh, yeah, my 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 orientation is is more uh, to Italy. I do all every year some demo in Austria too. Um, this year, also my demos in Austria uh, won't uh, happen. And that's sad, but. Um, yeah, this year is a little bit special. Okay, thanks. 
Do you have many female students? Um, it's about one third of all my students, but usually, and that's a little bit sad, um, most of the students, that some, some students go ahead with wood turning and some others don't. They try it in a, in a two-day course, course and then uh, they, they stop or I don't know. And usually the females um, don't go ahead. I don't know why. There is not much uh, women going ahead with wood turning. That's a little bit sad. I love I love having all, always some some women in in my in my courses because it changes a little bit um, the the movement. It it's I, I love that. Uh, but yeah, it's a little bit sad that uh, not a lot of women go ahead with wood turning. I don't know why. Okay, thanks. So that's all the questions we've got so far. Anyone else got any questions? Uh, I have here also my uh, sharpening zone, uh, if you're interested. <laughs> yes, that, yeah, we could uh, take a look at that. Um, I noticed this, um, this special sharpening um guru uh, you know 40 degrees here and 30 here and whatever and uh, that comes probably um from my my past because when when i made my um apprenticeship we didn't have any jig we we didn't have any bow gouges the bow gouges uh came I think in the in the mid nineties, and um, uh, so uh, sharpening was sharpening by hand. Um, everybody had his own angle without knowing how many degrees. But uh, so I just have one jig. It's it's the jig for the for the bow gouges or for for all gouges, but I use it. Um, especially for my bow gouges and the rest is still uh, freehand uh, sharpening. What I really love is the um, CBN um, disc. That is uh, really a, a good thing and I have, uh, I have one here that I want to put on the other side. That's next step. So um, that's all. That's all. I have some some. You know, this is a jig I made by myself uh, for my woodcut um, hats. You, you know the woodcut uh, Halloween tool. My my preferred Halloween tool. Where is it? Oh, here. Um, this one. Uh, my 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 really preferred Halloween tool. Oh, all these pieces are hollowed hollowed by uh, freehand. With this one, I I can go to forty of that. Uh, and uh, this is my my sharpening jig. Uh, it's very very easy. Let's take. It's just putting it in, and uh, as it has this, um, um, how is that called? This part, this this brass part, the limitator, limitator. Yeah. Uh, so I use the limitator to have always the the right direction. It's not not wrong like this, and then. Uh, with the 
the table here, I can sharpen that. This is the uh, one jig I use because I, I I found it not so easy to sharpen the the woodcut heads. Voila, that's it. And what I also did uh, now during this um, this um, Corona period, uh, I started with the streaming. Not only me, I know <laughs> a lot of us started the streaming, and um, I, I discovered uh, th that is a really funny funny thing or. It gives me a lot of fun, that's it, uh, what I mean. Um, because it's not just YouTubing without interaction. I, I love streaming because I, I have also this um, question answer um, and say hello, just uh, meeting people I know but I never, I never saw before. <laughs> Uh, now I know, Paul, how you're made, um, so um, uh, I have here my, my um, streaming place too, this is for my, for my cameras, and uh, um, another camera usually is here on, on, the, on the table with a tree, tripod. Uh, so this is my 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 streaming and YouTubing place, and I I make YouTube films uh, videos in uh, in German, Italian, and in English. Yeah, my in what I call English. Huh? <laughs> um, Yeah, that's another thing I I do, and I love doing. Okay, um, question about your dust extraction system. What, what have you got? Oh, uh, yeah, um, I have two duct, dust extraction. One is outside of of this of the of the building. So uh, I can uh, bring all the fine dust uh, also outside. What I don't have, and I missed that a little bit, but the, the place here is really big, so mm, it, it would um, take a, a lot of money, but uh, the, the, fi the fine dust filters, uh, I, I don't have that. So I have here one uh, dust extraction uh, this is mostly for the plane because uh, the the plane shavings. Um, I I prefer have the plane shavings separate from the other for from the dust uh, because um, there is a lot of people um, coming to pick up my my good shavings for small animals, um, um, chicken or whatever, and uh, they don't want all dust in. And I have a bigger, uh, a bigger one outside for the, for the um, table saw and also for the, like you can see here, uh, the, the hose, and then I have uh, have this um, this sheet to put on the way. 
when the Holy Spirit rose on me. Okay, is that, is that okay? Yeah, brilliant, thank you. Can we have a closer look at your centre study on the lathe behind you? Ah, uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, um, this is the Carter study rest, and I have to tell you that I'm not so so happy with it. Um, that's why it's not really stable enough for me. I have one, another one for my old space station. Uh, for my old Mavis. Um, this is made by uh, um, metal worker close here and uh, this is much more stable it's not he didn't he, he he didn't do everything what i wanted but uh, it's much more stable i love it much more and it works very well on the old ladies there and i i should change something here to put it on this one um yeah or or i i I tell him to do another one for my, for my, um, for my Stratos ladies. But this one, yeah, it's nice because you can open it, uh, so you don't have to, to, um, to, to, to put it away always, uh, but yeah, you see what I mean. This is a little bit a stupid uh, thing what I did here because my my tool rest is on the wrong side, <laughs> so I have to I have to change that. Yeah. So. Okay. Thanks. Um, your um, do you use ring tools and hook tools, or is it just the woodcut tool you use for hollowing? Uh, for hoeing, I have just a woodcut. I have some. Um, I have. I have some. Um, I bring it here. <clears throat> These. These are um, two hollowing tools with the carbide, carbide tips. Uh, a friend of mine made them. Uh, he, he has a, a forge and whatever you need for that. And, um, but I, I don't use them really, really often. Uh, I was very happy to have them and then um, uh, at the end I didn't use them very very often but uh, sometimes um, the woodcut tool perhaps is a little bit too aggressive uh, if you want to correct a little bit um, so you can you can just um, 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 yeah, scratch away this, uh, this, yeah, I, I don't use them really much. Mm -hmm. um, I have one thing I can show you uh, that's there. This is my shelf for the balls. Where, where all my bones are drying. You can see these, these are bones uh, in um, uh, maple and uh, there is a special uh, Mediterranean oak, some walnut and some um, cherry too. And you can see there is the, the date when I when I rough them out 
the ant crane is um, with an ant sealer on and usually they are there for one year and then I can finish them. Now there is a lot of older ones um, because um, I didn't sell very much balls um, lately. So <laughs> there is some ball from two or, or already three years ago. Uh, and on this side, these are the uh, vases, future vases also here for, for drying. You could be interested in what I use for sanding. Um, I do most of my sandings with these um, mechanical sanders, um, power, power sander. Uh, I love them more than the front sander. This is an angle, angle, um, angle drill. And I love I love them more than the front three. Um, so uh, usually I I um, I invert the, the the direction of my lathe and I send like this. Love them very much. Then what else? This is my, my chuck uh, system. These are all uh, Nova chucks. And then I do also some... Um, no, I, I don't do piercing. No piercing, but some of uh, Dremel, Dremel work. Uh, the rotary tools. Yeah. But I don't have nothing here to show you. But um, this is one thing I do sometimes, not very often. I prefer coloring. Do, do you sell all your work direct or do you, do you have galleries and craft fairs and things like that? Oh, selling, selling is a really a big problem. <laughs> um, I, I know you know that. Um, we have some, uh, some, some uh, shop, local shop. We are uh, quite a touristic zone. Uh, here, uh, so uh, there is some some shop uh, selling um, craft, and um, they they sell they sell my stuff. Then uh, when I do demos, I bring off some of my stuff too, and uh, yeah, sometimes some exhibition like the one in Italy now. Uh, but uh, yeah, without my students, it would be really hard. I I really need the students uh, to to survive. That's I'm working I'm working hard on this uh, a little bit online. Uh, you have seen I have also a, 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 a homepage with a shop. Something I sell there, something on Facebook, um, but um, yeah. Oh, during Christmas time, I do some Christmas market, and in in the summer, some fair. But it's not my my stuff is too too expensive for this for these uh, fairs, so it's it's better in a 
in a in a shop with a little bit uh, higher standing. Mm. Okay, thanks. Um, next question: What do you use to finish the inside of your hollow forms? What um, do you finish them with? Uh, I mostly put on uh, black acrylic paint. Yeah. Uh, you you mean uh, the finish, uh, the, the the painting or the no the actual cutting, yeah. cutting the, the the final sort of cutting process is it? Is oh, it, the final uh, cutting process. Oh, okay. Use other okay. Oh, uh, and uh, cutting and sanding. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. For the final cut, I I use I have um, a scraping head for the for the wood cut. Uh, for the woodcut tool, uh, there is also a, a scraping head, and uh, yeah, if I have some irregularity, um, I, I I scrape it away. Uh, usually, it is a, a woodcut scraper, and then I use um, yeah, sanding inside is always a little bit um, difficult. I use I use. Um, I, I make this descending sticks. Uh, they are, um, or oh, this is, I don't know, um, uh, uh, foam, foam, something, and I use this one uh, to sand the inside. And then usually I put on uh, two layers of acrylic, black acrylic uh, uh, color. That is um, uh, hiding everything. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, someone's asked, can they see that? The, the extractor you showed us that goes on the lathe, can we see that sort of close up? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. You showed us the, an, an extractor hood that goes on the lathe for the for dust extraction. Can we can we see that a bit? Ah, uh, okay, yes, I can do that. Of course. This just just like this, and then you can. You can uh, change here and, and here. You can put it down or up or wherever you want. And, and uh, holes. Uh, it's not for this lathe. <laughs> it's it's for, for here. Usually this lathe is here. And here is the 230. And uh, so, um, yeah. I, I have this just for one day, not for every late year. But yeah, that's that's it. It's a really really simple piece. It um, comes from Italy. There is a a small producer in Italy making these ones. Yeah. Do, do you use a hollowing jig for any of your hollowing? Is it all freehand? It's all freehand. I just use the the extra um, the extra um, uh, tool rest. The, 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 um, yeah, it's called the fill irons tool rest. Yeah. <laughs> He, he had the idea for this one. Uh, it's just what I use, but it's all freehand. And I can go with the, with the wood cut, I can go until 40. But um, when I go so deep, I use a second handle. So this is uh, really <laughs> um, a lens. Um, with, with 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 only one handle, I can't reach. Um, 
40 centimeters. And when I go to, uh, when I go so deep, I use only the handles. I put usually the, the bar in because the 60 cent, uh, millimeters of the bar uh, gives me more um, vibrations than the 25 millimeters of the, of the handle. Um, so usually I use um, Usually I use it um, with the handle completely in, completely means here, more, more than this isn't possible. And then um, I use the second handle here and then um, it's all under here. And so I can reach. It depends also of the wood. Uh, if we have very hard wood, I can't. I can't reach um, forty centimeters. But in the medium hard woods, like uh, like we have, we have a lot of um, of um, sweet chestnut here. Uh, I can easily reach uh, thirty-five, forty. Uh, I tried it with uh, the U, doesn't work. Uh, with the U, I, I, I have troubles to go o o over 32. It depends a little bit, but that's what I do. Okay, thanks. Can we have a look at the tools on the wall, like the hand tools? Uh, all the tools here. Yeah. So I have some very interesting stuff um, here. So this is the the small the small uh, woodcut the woodcut flexi hole over. Um, then uh, this is a hook tool. I I love uh, I love the hook tool. I'm a hook tool hooked. Um, for end grain hollowing, this is a this is not my preferred. It's a forged uh, from a guy uh, in, um, in a German part of Switzerland. I don't love this one very much. I prefer the other one. Uh, lately, um, we have seen a lot of these. Uh, there is a, a Hungarian uh, a guy um, on Facebook. Uh, he he sells this uh, hand forged um, hook tool and also this uh, Russian um, Russian uh, skill. And yeah, I, I, I like both. This, um, this hook is easier to handle than the other one and gives a very smooth finish. Um, then I have a third one and this is the Wiedemann hook. It's a German hook, it's a crank hook. That's the easiest one, not the one with, with the best um, finish. But uh, it's the easiest one to handle. Um, it's a little bit similar to the the martel hook, the, perhaps the most well known one. Oh, uh, also, who, who is that? My cousin hook. Oh, 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 uh, does a a hook too, a nice one. Uh, the, the crank took is, is much easier to to handle. You, you don't you don't have um, catches with the crank took. 
and this one is a bit harder and uh, this one uh, catches always and I don't know <laughs> and uh, another problem of this one is that that the, the, the bar is too too thin I have too much vibrations with this one I don't want this the Russian skew it was really um, I, I was just very very curious I, I used the skew very often I love the skew I'm not the master of the skew like like um, Steve Jones uh, but I think I handle I handle the skew quite well uh, I have still to to discover this one I can tell you nothing about it um, I, I still have to try it. Another interesting tool you can see here is uh, this one. These are the, um, the um, spoon drill. That's uh, literally translated from German. Um, I don't know if, if they have another name in, in English. Uh, and they, they, I use them to to drill to, to come, come here to to drill my hollowed forms uh, before before hollowing. I put usually you can see that here. Uh, yeah, I use this one. <laughs> uh, I put. I put a sign where I will want to finish uh, the hole, and then that's a really, really super quick um, um, kind to to um, to do a hole instead of the paste stock, and um, that's that's not. I don't love that, so I, I use this um, this spoon uh, drills. That they are great. Uh, these are inherited. I I don't know where uh, um, everyone producing these ones today. Uh, I don't know. I would like to know if someone um, produces this still. Um, but you can also simply use uh, uh, a spindle gouge for that. That's that's nearly the same thing. So uh, you can take a, a, bit, a bit bigger uh, spindle gouge and. Um, um well weld 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 the bar on and uh, you have you have uh, you, you are close to this this uh, spoon uh, spoon drills here other interesting stuff this is just my preferred um roughing gouge um, that's how I learned. It's the German German shape of the roughing gouges, and uh, I learned with this one, so I'm I'm still used to use it, and I love it. It's it's quick to sharpen, and um, you can do a, a nice a nice finish uh, just with the, the roughing gouge bit aggressive so with this uh, big piece we saw on my old old lathe there uh, I can't use this one because uh, there are too much branches in so no not possible what else here oh for sanding I love to use also this uh, inertia sander so this is another one I got this one from Tim Skilton personally. Um, I had um, I had some uh, demo in in Australia, 
three, four years ago. And I met Tim Skid, and he gave me this one. And he is the producer of this. What else? This is uh, oh, ah oh, where is it? I have something very interesting. I don't see. Should be here, but I don't see. Um, uh, this is a plate I used to um, eliminate the. Uh, the, the tenants at the end of my work. And so I, I pressed the ball against this, uh, this uh, that's um, um, cork, cork. Uh, and, but the interesting part is this one. I have a, um, uh, 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 Thread, uh, 33 per three and a half uh, threading uh, thing. I don't see it. And so I make my own, my own um, chucks, threaded chucks. I can use them. Um, so you just cut the thread straight in the wood with a, with a tap? Yeah. That's it. Okay, go ahead. Something else you see, and you would like to know what it is? Are those, those threaded um, hubs you've got on the bottom of the shelf there, do you buy those or do you make those yourself as well? Um, I, I don't know what you mean. Where you've got your chucks on the shelf, screwed on. Ah, this, uh, this, um, no, I buy them. I don't have, uh, no, I, I have only, <laughs> yeah, of my, uh, I have only the, the piece for the inside for the female thread. Yeah. I don't have the, the other one. That's, that's a little bit sad, yeah. <laughs> I should have that. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell it to my wife. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, can, can we see uh, the tips of the hook tools close up? So, you got a question yes. about that one? Uh, the, this one. So this is just a, a, a straight hook. I don't have here any crank hook. Oh, perhaps I have. Like, give me, give me a second, and I go to have a look. I should have one in my. I, I sell also some. Um, uh, wood turning stuff, also the latest I sell them, and uh, yeah. some some other stuff, uh, pen pen uh, kits, pen blanks, and so on. And I should have a great book. No, no crank to I might have, but I can show it. I can show it on the catalog. Well, it's not very, very, very clear. It's not so you can see that very, very well. But, um, mm. This is the 
the crank took and it cuts it's it the cut this is here on down you, you don't see that very well said hey. but i can um i can give you a link um i can send it to you paul and okay there is a good video from uh, the, the German uh, producer of these books and um, I, I, can, I can give you the link tomorrow and uh, you can give it to who is interested. Okay, yeah, that would be useful, thanks. If I, if I don't, uh, so... Uh, Give me just a kick. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, which catalogue was that you were just showing us? Who, who's the, the supplier? Catalogue. Ah, this is, is um, um, this is my, my, um, the supplier is, you know, this, this is the wrong one without, it's a Neuwriter Neu in, um, in Austria. He is my, my supplier. I'm, I'm a retailer uh, of, this, of this stuff in, in Switzerland or in the, in the Italian part of Switzerland. I sell, I sell a lot also in, in Italy. Uh, it's one of the biggest um, Supplier of wood tanning stuff in the German, in the German area. Neuwriter, it's called. I can give you also this link. Yeah. Okay, that'd be useful. Of course. Uh, they these are really nice guys, and every year, every year they organize a, a wood tanning um, meeting in uh, two days uh, it's, it's a very big with uh, 30 or more uh, demonstrators and um, yeah very very interesting and good good demonstrators from from everywhere I think um, yeah usually there is um, Jan Hovens from from Holland and uh, a lot of people from Germany, from um, um, uh, Austria too. Uh, there is always someone from Sorby, from England, and um, yeah, uh, very very interesting show. And uh, usually, I'm I'm a, I'm a demonstrator there since some year. For, for, some, for some year now and um, uh, what I do usually is uh, showing the the, um, the woodcut tools and uh, doing some coloring stuff so. okay thanks well I think we've run out of questions so thank you very much for doing that um, I'm, I'm just going to unmute everybody so they can all join in and uh, talk about wow. it. Yeah, th thank you very much for doing that, Matthias. It's been an interesting evening. Thank you very much. Uh, and um, thank you for doing this for us. Uh, that's cheating to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, thank you very much. I said thank you very much. Uh, I'm very happy to do this, and uh, this is a great possibility for us to to know each other, and uh, that's great that you you do that for us. So, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thanks, Matthias. Totally enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, really good. Really good. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I hope. Uh, Have you thought about? Thank you, Matthias. Thought about doing virtual very classes. Right. Thank you, You're time. welcome. You're welcome. Paul, thank you very much indeed. Really, really enjoyed that. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you very much.
So how much of your time do you spend teaching and how much do you spend making things? Did you speak with me? Yeah, yeah, just a... I didn't understand, sorry. How much of your time would turn and do you spend teaching and how much do you spend making things? Um, that's, um, yeah, usually I, I have um, classes every week yeah. and I have normally like uh, 50 or 60 um, um, students every year for the base course and then uh, a, a lot of them uh, come from for 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 advanced courses and yeah this year is completely different so um, normally I think that's about half and half but this year um, yeah I have still to, I had my first student uh, last Sunday. Uh, I had some in January and then uh, in February I go in holidays. And then in, uh, when I came back from holidays, uh, everything closed. So I had, I had four or five students this year. Um, yeah, we'll see.